Hi, this is Mikey D from LibreGeek.org, and this is a small test of um, the Retro Rig project that I have. Um, now, the script itself just started as a way for me to back up my existing configs for some emulators, and it just snowballed into this this thing that it is now. And I figured it was far enough along that I could show a few things. Um, that way, I can give you guys an idea of what it does, and it's really just an installer script and it makes a lot of settings changes sets up a lot of emulators for you um, so let's get to running it this is after I cloned the retro rig directory with uh, git clone and then the address uh, on github and there is an extensive wiki that I'm constantly updating so be sure to check out that on github as well so if we do a, a dot forward slash retro rig setup sh um, it'll load the modules and let you know that it uh, has to be run as sudo you can also do a dash dash help and it'll give you um, kind of a color text that tells you where the current where it's going to be installed so we see home test retro rig um, I, this you can also install it with different usernames or a path this is some similar stuff that RetroPy does um, but um, a lot of the different packages that use a lot of things is much 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 different so we can do sudo dot forward slash retro rig load the modules um, little figlet uh, banner there with the website and we have the main menu here so we have a number of things the main things install retro rig which will install everything automatically now I already have this set up but I can I, I can run it over top of it and it won't it pretty much just wipe out my my games database in XBMC which is not a big deal just have some test ROMs anyway so the um, settings here we can do a bunch of different settings we can do change resolution um, this will change resolutions and report them for um, some emulators such as mess automatically just resolution so some will not even require this they do filters and scalers so the emulators that um, show it or can have direct resolution changes I'll list them here so like med defense stuff uh, you can do direct resolutions so you can set them here um, some presets you can do your own um, resolution as well it does affect sometimes how things scale if you go too big but um, I'm trying to include a lot of adjustable things or just let you tell you how to get into the emulators themselves and do it uh, change plugins filter scaling um, that's a future thing there's really nothing other than moving 64 in there right now change game pads um, right now it's just the Xbox 360 controller wired and wireless but uh, I hope to add the wired PS2 controller sometime in the future um, you can do enable SSH support which will install open SSH server allow you to put a, a custom port in there and restart the service um, you can do a BIOS loader and uh, also verify them um, that's mainly for mess right now uh, and you can also load those manually a lot of this stuff you can do manually but I'm trying to make everything as easy as possible you can enable the XBMC session. Uh, that's main, I've marked as beta because it does seem to not handle frame rates as well, and it's kind of erratic. Um, but I'm going to try and work on making that better with the X session that uh, does launch. So let's just do uh, an install here. So I'll do a binaries-based installation. Uh, import any repositories like PlayDeb, and I add one other for another emulator. Uh, do an update here and this should be fast enough since I already have the stuff installed so we don't make you wait five hours for this <laughs> so it's reading all the packages okay doing the installs and it does generate the debug logs in a tar.gz uh, file under the uh, folder root path, so retrorig logs. So now it's going to do the emulator installs, and there's a message here about XBM session just to kind of give you a warning. And VirtualBox is kind of flaky just with performance. Uh, if you do VGA pass through, it's a lot better. Um, but it does work, and I have tested it. So if you have any issues, please submit a, uh, a ticket. But this is mainly mainly meant for physical older machines or machines that you upgraded and repurpose. So software install complete. So it's going to install um, the rest of the emulators here. Um, P, uh, the PSP emulator um, is pre-built in a build directory. So debug log gets generated at various points. 
a lot of this stuff I'm still learning the curves, so you just have to bear with me. Uh, it lets you know some messages here like the mess configuration requires BIOS files or it will not run. Um, a lot of the, the systems, including Neo, Geo, uh, I have CDZ in right there right now. So finish the emulator installs. Do some of the post configuration sets up in its scripts. Um, and right here, we do. We ha I only have 360 controller right now, but I will add more. Uh, mainly, it's going to be Xbox 360 and PS3. So we do that. It adds configs in its scripts. Um, now here you can pre-select pre a resolution for the emulators that support it. Mainly, like I said, Mendefin and a couple others. Um, mine is 1280 by 1024 on this test PC. Um, you can also do a custom resolution as well, like I said. So we'll just set that. Uh, finish the main install uh, task, and it gives you a little notice that you have to copy the ROMs over. So um, that's mainly it. You can also update Git, the binaries for the em any emulators, uh, upgrade a system, which is the normal app get upgrade, uh, start retrorig, uh, reboot, and uninstall. And I'm going to have an import export option soon. So I had this in windowed mode because full screen is weird with Vino, um, the sharing application. So here's uh, Retro Rig. So I have a, a little custom splash page here with a nice little background. And I cut out the, the extra buttons on the main screen from the Maximalism script, I believe. So um, you have the Play Movie button, which actually just starts ROM Collection Browser. Uh, we have our settings page, and I really like this skin for its minimalism, um, and it fits well with the color schemes that I'm using. So you can do a lot of things you normally would do in XPMC. Um, then we have the, the shutdown menu where you can go, you know, do the normal tasks. And um, if you hit up on the D-pad, you'll get quick uh, settings here about XPMC network storage, all this stuff. That's typical of the skin, but it's a nice little thing to get an idea of what you're running. So start Retrorig. Now I have uh, no ROMs in here. Now I'm going to just add uh, a ROM file here. And we're going to go into test ROMs. And I'm just going to add one that I like. Um, We'll just add, how about Super Mario Brothers? So we'll add that. And this is just a demonstration of where to put them. So we have Retro Rig uh, ROMs, and it's going to go in the Nest folder. Oh, uh, I already have them loaded, actually. So import here. Now, a, a brief tip on this. Now, when you go to import your ROM collections, you're going to want to, if you only put one ROM and one folder, you want to select that particular system, not all. It works on all but sometimes it'll sit for a while or stall because it's checking all the folders. Now if you have no ROMs in any folders, it will stall. I don't know why that happens. It might be the pre-made configuration, but it works as long as you have a ROM somewhere in one of the folders, which you should have anyway, I, w I would hope. So I'll just do import here, and it's going to start importing all my games. Again, the graphics are kind of nice on this skin, a little flag up in the corner. And this will take just a second. Um, the importer bar is kind of like hidden on the skin. It normally shows you like a 50% and it never really moves. Well, there it actually moved to 75. So we'll give it just a second here to import ROMs. And again, I'm, I'm running in window mode because Vino doesn't like full screen. I don't, I can't understand why, but. And simple screen recorder, I figured it would be easier as well. So if this takes too long, I'll just cut this out of the YouTube clip. Okay, this, so it's done there. Now the MAME, uh, if you hit, there's a lot of uh, shortcuts in here that I can explain easier if you contact me or if you just look up how to use ROM Collection Browser. Uh, easiest is D-pad left, brings down the little list here where you can select your consoles. Um, I have it set to not save the state so it always goes to all your ROMs. You can still select favorites. Um, that way, uh, when you load this initially, you're not stuck on a certain console. You can go by genre, your publisher, and I really like this um, over my other favorite, 
Project Retropie, mainly because this sorting option is really handy when you want to find particular games. If you hit, go to your favorites, then you don't have to go through 100 games if you have all those loaded. So the main uh, emulators doesn't have the artwork, but I have all the offline scrapers working. So here's Neo uh, Geo CDZ. Um, there's Turbo Graphics, so some others in here. Um, and we'll just do a demonstration of Super Mario 64. So the controls are listed on the wiki, which is good, and um, you'll see all that stuff. Now if I turn the volume down here. So um, this is just a demonstration of one of the emulators, and all of these emulators are pre-set up, and the available file formats are listed on the wiki uh, that I currently have put into XBMC. So everybody loves that. Um, the guide button will exit all the emulators, at least currently. Um, you know, there's Streets of Rage. This used Mednafen. Um, and again, loading and saving um, all with the joysticks clicks. So, you know, beat up some bros here. Please come and help me out. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time talking about this, but um, as you can see, you just launched the games from here. Um, if you press the X button on the controller, it brings up the context menu. I had to remap every button here because of the way I use the trigger and D-pads as buttons. And you can go through the normal stuff here, but this is the reason also why I chose um, using XPMC and, and ROM Collection because of all these amazing options you can tweak even after the fact. So you don't have to go into text files and, and mess around with a lot of stuff, and that makes it really handy. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'll do my best to kind of make this nice, um, but I just wanted to give a short demonstration, and because Chris Fisher of last <laughs> asked for it, so um, that's why I'm putting it up here. And if there's anything else you'd like to see or is um, request anything, uh, an issues submission on GitHub is the best way, or go to libregeek.org and use the contact page um, or any of my Twitter handles or anything like that. All right, this is Mikey Dean. Thanks for, for thanks for watching and look at the Retro project.